Greetings! I am Omnisai. We are here today because, well, quite honestly, a lot of us are going through some difficult changes in life, brought about by an outside force that is scary, uncomfortable, and nobody, I can't think, really wants what's going on to happen. It's caught many of us by surprise, and quite honestly, we're exposed by how little preparation we really had in place. However, in these uncertain times, humanity will do what it can to raise itself up. You do hear stories about people who are going the extra mile trying to keep their neighbors going, keep some socialization even if it can't be face-to-face, -face. trying to do all the little things that they can to try to help everybody to get to the finish line, to get past this, this exile from society, this fear that hangs over our head that every person that we see, be they wearing masks and gloves, used to be quite the, uh, quite the look. That would usually get you to look at a person in fear, and these days, even a person wearing masks and gloves could be the person that gives you something that could change your entire life. Not for the better. So, while the coronavirus swirls, I want to look at a few things that we can do to try to weather it out together. In this, my special edition, Lair of Omnisai. A new season brought forth by a new year. What new dangers, what new knowledges, what discoveries, and what stories will we uncover? For all of these and more can be found here at the Lair of Omnisai in this, our third season. For those of you who are fortunate enough to have a regular group, say, who meets periodically, Perhaps once or twice a week. Maybe only once a month. Maybe less often than that. But due to all of this, can no longer meet face to face. And your entire schedule has been uprooted, ripped apart. Nothing is the same and nothing is as easy as it ever was. Well, first of all, we'll look into what the hobby can do for you. So, if you have access to the internet, and I have to believe you do since you're seeing me, of course you probably by now have heard of online role-playing games. They started early on in the day with MUDs, which were text-based games that presented a world and you would interface with it, with your character, and MUDs stood for Multiple User Dungeons. There were many people who could get onto the server with the dungeon, and you could interact with them, for good or for worse. You would find out quickly which ones wanted to help you and made sure that you had a good experience and could grow and help change the face of the dungeon, and which ones were interested in killing you and rolling your body. MUDs were very popular back in the day when that was all we had. And I'm not going to claim that I was a part of that earliest of uh, remote internet role-playing, but I've certainly seen some of it, and I have been a part of a few of the remaining uh, MUDs that are in existence. Making a character running around, trying to imagine what it was like when that was all that we had. Now, as soon as graphics came into the setting, the 
massively multiplayer online role-playing game kind of sprouted. You would have an avatar and could communicate with others in the same zone quite frequently, or perhaps uh, they had some localization where it was just the people around you could hear what you were saying. Uh, and you could get into battles alongside of others, and perhaps even against other folk. Although the best games usually gave you an option to do one or the other, without having to worry about being drawn into a multiplayer battle. And in those earliest games, I did take a part. Earlier games like EverQuest, or Ultima Online. So, yes, uh, I remember what that was like, and asking for role-playing in those instances was somewhat painful in many a server, even ones dedicated to role-playing. Much of the time, people were interested in the mechanics of the game and the rewards. They quickly marked out which were the best dungeons and which ones gave but little treasure and never gave another thought to those dungeons, which unfortunately ruined a few of those games in my mind. Uh, I, for instance... Uh, started playing the Turbines uh, Dungeons & Dragons online when they launched it, but it quickly became evident that not all of the dungeons were made equally, and you could never find people to run the less popular dungeons, the ones that didn't give the most treasure, the fewest treasure chests, the fewest options to accelerate your power by finding the best things. Those remain an option, of course, if you want to throw yourself into something and find yourself with a large block of time and the encouragement to stay at home. I would be very surprised if almost all massively multiplayer online games are not enjoying an upswelling of subscriptions and people spending time on their servers. But ultimately, there is a truth to all massively multiplayer online games. If there is a storyline at all, your storyline is just like everybody else's. You're leaving no lasting mark in the world. Everything that you do is there because it's been done before, will be done by people after you. You are not the special hero, no matter how many NPCs tell you you are special. You are just one of many experiences, and... The more artfully crafted the game is, you may be able to forget that for a time. But, ultimately, you only stay in those kind of games if you really become invested in the end game, The endlessly playing the game again and again, trying to get the best gear, perhaps attempting to ascend the player-versus-player ladders. The stories can be excellent to let you in, but after a point, the uniqueness of the setting starts to fade. You start seeing the similarities. When you start a new character, you rush through the game as quickly as you can, because you've seen all of that before. You just want to get this character with this set of abilities maxed out as quickly as you can now. There aren't very many games that can break that mold. Some can diffuse it a bit, but for most games, it's a railroad. You're going from point A to point B, and while there may be branching tracks, there's only so rewarding that they can be. But if you do find a game that has a heart and it has a soul, and you're a role player at heart, sometimes you can bring that spark to those games. I've often found that just by trying to role-play, to talk in character, rather than just, oh, and the thing that kills these things, the sp spamming in the speech of these games, uh, you know, level 20 uh, half-orc paladin LFG, when you start using the abbreviations and things, while it may help and it can certainly make it easier to make macros and the like, kills immersion. 100%. That person's only interested in playing the game, not necessarily in enjoying the full roleplay experience. So while those can be amusing, certainly, getting newer and cooler things, being able to cast bigger and bigger spells, and then finally facing truly epic challenges and raids and dungeons, I always found they lacked a little bit. Just didn't have the 
the oomph that made me feel like I was doing something special in a game. So I, like many other people, I've played chat-based role-playing games, often that take place in a forum. There's two types. There are ones where everybody meets at a set amount of time and plays together, all their things being taken out into uh, context of the world by your chat bar. You type in what your character says, you type in what your character does, and the more descriptive you can make what you say, the more everybody else around you can react to your character, can see what you're doing, and you can emote and express, oftentimes in a way that a blank-faced avatar in a massively multiplayer online game can do. You can give your character a soul, and you can emote meaning and intent into the context of your game. These games can be very rewarding, and if set to a regular time that fits into your schedule, you can play role-playing games nearly as intricately as you can with a group set up around a table. Obviously, there are some things to be left desired. Often on those games, you have to have multiple windows open for your character sheets and, and other things of that nature. And, of course, if everybody is talking at once, it can cause the screen to become a blur of conversation, description, combat, and, of course, computer-generated dice rolls. But those games are a good attraction for those people who really want a role-playing experience but don't have any of the other peripherals that might make playing a game such as that easier. They're so simple that any phone or tablet should be able to uh, run a simple chat room, uh, and there have been many that I've been aware of. I've spent a fair amount of time on MIRC, for instance. But this, this, that's certainly one way that you can play. The other one, of course, is the po play-by-post, where on a given forum, you post an entire description of what your character says and does, outlines for different possibilities, and these also give you a great opportunity for emoting and expressing in detail what your character does and thinks and says, to the point that if somebody took out all of the, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers, the, the hard parts of it, you could almost make a story woven throughout the different paths of the different characters. And there are some very talented storytellers who make use of this method. Uh, on D&D Beyond, for instance, it's a very fertile ground for people doing such a thing. It uh, wasn't too long ago I w uh, was playing with my friend Rick Hilliard, the, the gentleman who owns the Your Seat at the Table on YouTube, and he was telling a fascinating story. And unfortunately, I couldn't remain a part of it, but he was doing an excellent job of weaving through a living, breathing city and making sure that the minutia of the world wasn't lost on the characters. Every single rat that squeaked across an alley seemed to have its own place, and, and an indelible one, too. Without it, the world would seem a little less real. So those are certainly some options. But for those who have access to a laptop, or a webcam, or a microphone, there are a variety of other options, too, for playing in real time. With a microphone and a camera, you can start opening yourself up to uh, playing with others face-to-face -face over a digital landscape. And there's any number of ways of doing that. The probably cheapest and easiest would be a, a program like Roll20, which can be played right out of a browser easily enough. As a matter of fact, my own game that I plan on running tomorrow is already preset and loaded and ready to go on my browser. All I have to do is open it up and make sure that my friends have accepted my invite to be a part of that party. Once they are, it gives me a very basic overlay so that I can present information and details to the players and track locations of where they are in real time. I myself am something of a novice to this form of role play, and I don't have the time and quite possibly develop the talents to really make this a treat. I'm sure there are people very skilled in Roll20 and other similar games that can make a, an entire panorama of action and adventure. But the game that I'm running, which is 316, Carnage Amongst the Stars, uses very, very, very basic 
uh, game overlays. Your character is at only one of three ranges. Positioning does not count. It's not tactical. Your characters only have two basic statistics, fighting ability and non-fighting ability. This is a game that is ideal for playing online because I don't need to see anybody and I don't need to put any pretty pictures up unless I want to enrich the character's experience, or the player's experience, of course. So to that end, it works as a storyteller that I'm still able to talk to my players over Roll20. I'm able to see them or, or they can see me. I have a camera, of course. Some of them do not. But it all functions to the point where if they have the program open, they can see the changes that I make on the, on the map, showing their, where their characters are in relation to their foes. And in general, it seems to work fairly well. But, moving forward, uh, if I'm going to be playing in any persistent level with Roll20, I'm going to have to get better at it, do some studying, watch some videos, and learn. There's lots of ins and outs of the system, and even though I've played with several of the tabs, it's clear that there's a lot of potential here, especially for someone who does their preparation and has their maps ready to go and has icons for their characters so that they can present everybody as they would if you had miniatures on the table before you and wanted to play out a tactical scenario. The game can handle that to a, to a very good degree. Of course, with the resources that I have at hand, it's a little bit harder because I haven't had to use that. I've been somewhat, well, if I must confess, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to that have everything that I need in general, so I don't reach out to such medium. But this is just one option, too, that's available. If you want to spend a little money, there are game services that are out and available for a little coin. Uh, Fantasy Realms is one that I have heard of, and I've also seen Tabletop Simulator available through Steam, where you can actually move playing pieces around on a virtual board and talk to other people. Uh, either through that software, or you can use an audio channel like Discord, which also works very good for that chat-based role-playing games. All the stuff that I was talking about, Discord works just fine for that as well. And it's a private server so that only you and your friends have to see what you're doing. Not a bad thing in general, especially when you're playing by invitation. Those kind of programs you may find out, or disciplines in using those skills, can come to bear in other times, perhaps, when we're not under the circumstances we are now. Sometime, one has to believe, we'll get back to some sense of normalcy. What we crawl out to from under the ashes is hard to say exactly, but at some point, it will be alright to gather together and play a game together again. In those circumstances, though, perhaps some of what we learn here may prove useful. For instance, I live in the, well, <laughs> in the north. I live in Wisconsin, which can get snow. It can have treacherous roads. We can have a blizzard dumped on our heads, and then it makes it very, very difficult for my friends to come here to my place to play. Now I have an option. We've been trained in it. By the time we're done with this, we'll be battle-tested in using Roll20 and Discord. And so, from that point, if I have to call a snow day, it can still be a game day, with a little bit of prep work and reminding everybody to come to the uh, game room. We can still play to some extent, perhaps not with all of the whistles and bells that I would like, but the improvements that they make periodically make the game experience still quite good. And I must say, I am impressed with what the system can handle. Six people all talking at once, with video going on at the same time, and allowing virtual dice to clatter across the table, and have things drawn and maps on the table. Yes, I must say, I, I am pretty impressed with what it can do. Even my old laptop can manage it without much difficulty. And I understand. I have an embarrassment of riches. I have a laptop. I have a smartphone. I do have some resources. If you don't have these, well, you'd have to make do. But even some of these are fairly meager, and they still work quite well. So, your game experience can still continue, 
But what about those times when you're not playing? You still may be shut up for long periods of time. Well, for one, it's a good time to catch up on your reading. If you have manuals that have been collecting and collecting and you haven't quite gotten through anything more than skim reading for the things you're looking for, now's a good time to hit the books and look for those details. If you have been playing in a rule set and haven't read the rules in a while, go back and read. You might find that there's a rule here or there that you've dog-eared a little bit, you've creased because either you didn't understand it full well, or maybe you confused it with a previous edition of that game, or another game like it that you've been playing. These things do happen. And perhaps the straightened out and proper rule from the game might be better than what you've been using, and might be clearer. Oftentimes those game designers do know a thing or two. But it gives you an opportunity to set back and work on perfecting your craft. Doing other things like... Painting miniatures. If you have unpainted miniatures, this is a great time to paint them. If you're like me and you've got stacks of projects that you need to tend to, as far as miniatures for upcoming games or even ones far flung, maybe you find a miniature that suddenly inspires you to something that you can do the next time you get into a game. These are all positive things that you can actually bring about from a tragically, uh, well, sometimes demoralizing and uh, tr just a tremendously difficult experience for a lot of people. Keeping your mind occupied, keeping your hands busy, this game, this hobby, provides you with many avenues for doing that. I can look over in my library and I can tell you I've perhaps read about 30% of what's over there. From skimming over rules to make sure that I understood enough to run a game, uh, but it was going to make up a lot of stuff as I went along anyhow. There's a tremendous amount of things that I can do myself, and I suspect that some of you are in the same boat. Or perhaps there are manuals you've had for years and years and years. Could do a little bit of polish. Could get a little bit more reading in. Just saying. Sorting out dice. Certainly sometimes they can get jumbled up together. Might be a good time to sort out a few sets and, you know, Make sure they're all shined up and sterilized, clean, what have you. The very game space that you're in, well, if nobody else is going to be enjoying it, might be the time to do the renovations in the room that you've been planning on doing. Or at the very least, a good spirited bout of cleaning. I know how things can get from experience. Especially since mine is in a working basement and my space isn't always my own. Cleaning becomes essential. Of course, if there's anything that I could tell you about uh, mixing role-playing with other avenues, well, I think there should be no greater time for a greater number of people to go online and make videos. Every, almost everybody these days, it seems, has a smartphone. Most of them have cameras that work fairly well. And with apps like YouTube, being able to plug in a video that you've made is actually incredibly easy. So if you have a great idea, perhaps you want to expound upon a character that you have or introduce them to the world, maybe you feel like demonstrating your cosplay tendencies, now is a good time for those kind of things as it's a positive pastime that keeps you busy, keeps you engaged, and keeps you from feeling like there's no hope but to endure and wait in silence and in sorrow. That doesn't need to be. Our pastime, this role-playing game that we play, is such a creative outlet with so many different possibilities surrounding it and intrinsic to it that there should never really be a time for a properly prepared gamer that they feel like there's nothing good to do. Finally, there are so many different things that are tangential to the hobby, many of which can help you to improve your own skills at the hobby. This can include watching movies that you've meant to watch for a long time that have been recommended to you by other gamers. You might find something in there that you can bring to your own table. I have frequently been told that uh, the TV show Stranger Things is awfully good for gamers to watch. I'm going to have to start watching that. Yeah, 
I don't sit down and watch things very often, so it'll be an experience for me. I'll treat it like my old uh, doing my podcast for movie criticism, and I'll start taking notes, and maybe I'll do a, a video series on Stranger Things or whatever I get my mind up to watch. The Witcher looks pretty good, too, but uh, I digress. Um, so, yeah, I was consuming other, other things, including, perhaps, uh, if you like watching streaming video of people playing games, oftentimes you can learn something from the way other people approach games, both different play styles, maybe a character that becomes very memorable. Sometimes you can even just rip things wholesale from, from other games, uh, shine it up, repurpose it, and boom, you can present it to your own group as something fresh and new. These are fantastic times for us to entertain ourselves. Yes, it sucks. We can't do all the things we'd like to do, undoubtedly. I'm sure many of us would just wish we could wave a magic wand and everything goes back to the way it was before we ever heard of the coronavirus. Yeah, that's true. But if we square our shoulders, look forward and try to make the best of the time that we have. In all things, really, but especially times like now, when things aren't as we would want it to be. We can look at ourselves, we can look at the things around us, and say, why can't it be better? In terms of the gaming hobby, you know, looking at the opportunities that you might be presented with, why can't I read more and learn more about what I'm doing? Why can't I watch more? And, and learn more about what I'm doing. And some of that stuff is very entertaining on its own. That is the challenge that is put before us. And we should rise to it and come out with something better than what we had when we went into this whole ordeal. I certainly hope for all of you who watch this that you are healthy, that you are staying credibly sane, that you do find the good in the time that you have. That you are able to connect with the people around you and appreciate those who are around you, no matter how much they occasionally annoy you, no matter how much they have habits that you wish would change. Eventually, we'll all be longing for other human contacts, so appreciate the ones you have around you if you do have folk who are shut in with you. Enjoy them. Try to engage them as well. They're suffering too. Let's build our empathy up for each other. Do things to keep everyone's spirits up. That's not an omnisci thing. That's not a gaming thing. That's the decent thing. And out of everything, I trust that those who come to watch my channel are high-class people with good character who do wish for the best for all of us. And in that case... Game on. Let's make this through together, folks. I'm Omnisai, and I am, of course, humbled that you came here to visit me in my lair. And until next time, thank you, and remember, the lair of Omnisai is open for you at all times. If I can do anything to ease the burden of quarantine or to enliven your time that you are spent without the kind of entertainment that you would prefer. Just let me know. I'm your game master. I am one who would attempt to do anything I can to make your lives a little bit better. So, thank you again, and I will see you the next time here in the Lair of Omnisai.